Marching Arts Education and Guard Closet present Marching Arts Now! Hey everybody, it's Tim Hinton, the Beast of the Marching Arts. We are going to be talking about WGI Percussion tonight. Welcome to Marching Arts Now, our Winter 2022 edition. We are going to be having so much fun. We have some special guests. First off, I want to bring in co-host for the evening, Laura Zakazinski. How are you, Laura? Hi, I'm doing great. So glad that you're here. All right, we're going to be talking about drumline stuff. We have some clips to show. I have a fantastic interview. Well, I think it's a fan. I have a, an interview I really like with Shane Gwaltney from Music City Mystique. If you guys want to hear about that, he talks about the show, gives you some insider tips. And also with us tonight is Dawson. Dawson Luffingwell, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. Good to be here. Dawson is here because he's been watching a ton of shows. We picked out some that he really likes that we're going to talk about. We're going to show some clips. We're all going to talk about what we like, that whole thing. So Dawson, thanks for being here. Of course. All right. So we'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay. So Laura, WGI Percussion, we're having it. The season is underway. How exciting is it to be back? It's so incredibly exciting. Um, I've been with United Percussion since 2020. And um, 2020 was the first season of world-class uh, indoor percussion for me. And it was just devastating when everything got shut down. And we went through a virtual season in 2021 to kind of keep everybody in the loop. And it's wonderful to be back in person. Well, tell us a little bit more about yourself. You're going to be listening to everybody. If, you've, or if you're catching this for the first time, we're going live on Tuesdays. And then the recording is always up. You can find it at the Marching Roundtable YouTube channel or at Marching Arts Education on our, at our website. If you're watching live, please comment, tell us where you're watching, and uh, ask some questions. So Laura, tell us about yourself. You said you're marching with United Percussion. What do you do there? Um, at United Percussion, I am in the front ensemble. I've been marching vibraphone for the past two or three years. Um, I have just graduated with a degree at Westchester University in music education as a clarinet major. So not a percussion major, but I like to say that I live a double music life. <laughs> Wow, that's very cool. So clarinet and percussion. Yeah. That's awesome. So and, and you're uh you're you're doing vibe again, vibraphone again this season? Yep. That is so cool. So I, I have all kinds of vibraphone questions, but I don't know if that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Maybe, <laughs> maybe next time. But everybody, if you're watching this, it's marching arts now. One week it's color guard, the next week it's percussion. This is percussion week. So Laura, we have a clip uh, from from this uh from United Percussion. You want to set this up? Tell do you want to say anything about it? Oh, um, so our show this season um, is all a, it's entitled The World is Watching. So basically the idea that um, in media and on the news and everything, the world is always watching you know, these important historical events. Um, there's cameras everywhere, you know, on our phones, on our computers, um, always watching. So we kind of go through um, different ideas we have spotlights on our heads, there's screens, there's cameras live broadcasting us playing on the screens, which has been really cool to, to play yeah. around with. And um, we actually document some important recent historical events that have happened that have kind of brought the world together in solace. And the, the theme from there is the hope that we can take from those events. Very good. So everybody, we are here talking about WGI Percussion. I have an interview with Shane Gwaltney of Music City Mystique coming up right after this. And Dawson Lovingwell is here to talk about shows, too. So we're going to have a lot of fun. First, let's watch this clip from United Percussion. Right. Wow. Very cool. Like there's drums in the gym and a great performance. And you have the lights on your, you mentioned this, but you have the lights on your head. That's really interesting. Yeah. That was um, an idea that we had back in 2020 with our searching theme, you know, searching spotlights, that sort of thing. Um, but I, the design team thought it would be cool to incorporate them again, just with watching um, and everything. So it's been really cool. As you can see, there's lots of props, lots of lights, lots of screens, like everything. It was super it was a super great feeling when we got on the floor and set up all of our stuff and the lights turned on the crowd was just ooh ah <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. <of> we're, <laughs> we're back performing live it's so exciting so everybody if you're watching welcome to marching arts now we're talking about wgi percussion tonight and if you want or if you're here and you're watching please like so more people will see this and also 
put in the comments where you're watching from. And if you have any questions for me or Laura, uh, as I said, Dawson's going to be here to talk about some shows a little bit later on. But the next thing that's going to happen is Shane Gwaltney from Music City Mystique. I had a conversation with him this morning about their season. He talks a little bit about the show and about what it's like to have an independent world-class group out there this season and everything that's happening. So let's watch that interview next. Synced up designs, music chunks. Shane, you're taking over the world of music and percussion, man. I think it's you're doing great work. Thanks, Dan. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. So we're here to talk about the winter season. It's happening again. How is everybody feeling about it? at least? You know, we're having a season. Man, you know, Mystique show is called Come Hell or High Water. And that's what we're doing. You know, like by any means necessary, we're making this season happen, man. So for it's fantastic. Sure. How does it feel to be back together and in the gym and back to a more, more normal season? Man, it's uh, the first time we pulled vinyl out was just like, uh, you know, like in the Fresh new vinyl in a gym floor, it, it, you know, it, it takes you back, you know, to uh, to all the good reasons that we do it. You know, um, we were active last year during COVID, but we were just we weren't in a real gym. We kind of did our light production, which is really great. And it really set us up for success for what we're doing this year. But, yeah, to be able to do a traditional show again and kind of get back on the, the court has been has been great for the staff and awesome for the members and definitely great for the organization. It's awesome. Yeah, you guys did such a very cool thing last season. I loved seeing about that. So congrats on making that happen and keeping your students engaged. I just want to ask you, like, there are challenges to getting back and running. So I don't know if there's post-COVID challenges or still COVID challenges, or particularly, are there challenges around having a year off on the court? <laughs> yes. Um, uh on an independent level with Mystique, for sure. I mean, like like I said, we were able to uh, do something the previous year where some groups weren't. So um, we're able to kind of move forward and, you know, with the momentum that we had. I think the biggest challenge, honestly, with independent groups are going to be is the year after. Because this year, everybody has three years worth of age outs. Because you've got the bonus year, you've got whatever. You know, we got people that are marching 24-year-olds, you know what I'm saying, in percussion. And when they all age out, they're it's not just one age out section. You're talking about the real age outs this year, plus the ones from last year, plus the ones from 2020. You know, so like if groups aren't planning on how they're going to grow their organization in the future, this this could be, you know, a bad one for a lot of people. So a lot of people are putting a lot of stuff on the floor. Um, it's kind of going for broke, you know what I'm saying, because they, they got the players, they've got the people. So I think independent world is going to be a really, really interesting year with just some just a lot of angst, you know, a lot of people want to kind of get out there and, and, and do their thing. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, <clears throat> that's a challenge that we're trying to prevent from next year. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but it's, it's definitely something we're, we're enjoying this year <laughs> with, with that. Um, on a high school level, it's just, uh, it's, it's stamina. It's um, just getting their ears dolled back into playing in a gym, you know, especially for the people uh on the east coast or in the north that have to deal with weather like we don't have the luxury of just drumming outside whenever we want so I mean, this is the first time a lot of the kids have been in boomy gyms in a while it's just you know it's just almost like starting over sometimes and kind of introducing it the other thing that i found kind of difficult with my high school kids is uh we personally don't have any seniors so we have a large junior class well that junior class was freshman when COVID happened they didn't really get the full the full effect and then last year we didn't do anything um and then so this year it's just like every kid like how do we pull a floor how do we i mean it's everything like it, it's been kind of fun and kind of like okay let's let's go back and let's start over on the basics and, and don't assume they know anything because they don't you know and uh which, which has been you know enlightening and rewarding at the same time so it's been fun so can you tell me one of the things that's been enlightening about it um you know, when you've been doing things for 25 years, you just assume or, or longer, but you just assume because you're on this routine year after year after year and you have students that teach other students, you know, you develop a culture, right, and traditions and things like that. Well, when you have one or even two years out of that and then you've got to restart again, you just kind of take for granted of the stuff that you've built for decades, you know, and um, the skills that you just take for granted that now you've got to like really kind of go back to square one on a lot of things. So I'm sure a lot of educators out there are realizing that, you know, instead of starting at step four through 10, like they would do every year, they're having to go back and start at zero and go up to 10 because they're not, you know, because they would assume that, you know, students and just the culture would at least get them to step four. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and since a lot of people have missed some of that, it's it's, it's been eye opening on that level. Like you go in, we're, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Then you realize, like, no, we're going to do this back here a little bit further, you know, kind of take a step back. So, um, yeah, to me, that's been the biggest, you know, 
challenge, but it's still been rewarding. Yeah, yeah I've had some directors that had that experience this past fall, and they kind of found it kind of refreshing to sort of reboot. They found they could make some changes to their traditions and standard oh, absolutely. So there's an opportunity here too. Oh, it's massive opportunities. And that's why I found that I enjoyed it. It's like, you know, all those things that we've been kind of thought we were right about and doing along, let's, this is a good opportunity to have a clean slate and start over. So um, that part I'm enjoying and clearly, you know, you've talked to people that are enjoying it also. Absolutely. So what can you tell us? Can you tell us anything about Mystique's show? Uh, yeah, um, we're doing, we want to be fun. You know, like we, we read the room, you know, over the past couple of years and uh, we, you know, you know, when a group's been around as long as we have, we, I'm not saying we get bored with indoor percussion, but when we design shows, we don't, we try to not design an indoor percussion show. Now we perform and compete in an indoor percussion medium, right? In a competitive arena, but like our, where we're thinking about how we entertain people and the elements that we bring on the floor, we really try to think outside the box a little bit. And uh, and this year, just there's no exception. We're just reading the room and just trying to figure out like, what do we, what do we need to do to make people feel like they're not watching another drumline show or the same one they would have watched in 2020? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do we move the activity forward in our own way and our own vision and still entertain people? And uh, <clears throat> so we've been kicking around the show for actually about five years and we just haven't had the right time to put it out or we weren't in the right state of mind or whatever it was. Or maybe we just ran out of ideas this year and fell back on the one we've been kicking around for five years. I don't know, but it's been killer. Long story short, it's uh, we're doing bluegrass, some gospel stuff. We're doing basically a tent revival, uh, traveling kind of, uh, it's not a religious show, but we use that kind of like the energy from like a, a Southern travel and tent revival. So, and for those people that don't know what that is, back in the day, they would have, you know, basically a circus come into town and set up and then come preach the good word from town to town and set up tents and, and jubilation and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's been, it's been fun. We've taken that, uh, that approach to it and it's just been entertaining, high energy and, and fun. And it's definitely something different than we've done in the past. So um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just excited to get it in front of more people. And I have to tell you, Shane, I love that you and your team are really brave that way, like taking risks and trying something really different that you haven't done. Of course, you have such a history of success that maybe it's a little bit different for you guys. But still, you're saying, let's try this crazy idea over here. Let's go out on a limb. There, it takes, there's some risk there. It takes a little bit of bravery. It, it does at times, but there's, there's places where you can take the bravery. It's like when you're one of the top groups, you can kind of help lead that. Or if you're one of the bottom groups, you can actually do the same thing because you don't have anything to lose, right? So there, there, there's those uh, two different instances where I feel like you can kind of like really stretch out and, and do what you need to do with it. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's rewarding to be able to do that. But it's, uh, it's, we just produce on our end of mystique. We're not, we're not teaching kids where fulcrums are and scales. It's like we're past all that, like, like most independent groups, you know, like we're able to kind of go in there and produce and, and uh, kind of create something that we all would want to march, you know, like that, that's the whole thing is like, we want to, I know that's what keeps me motivated is like, I always want to create shows that I would want to do in my much more physical days when I could go out there and do it. But, uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's the intent is be able to kind of do that, that stuff to where um, the staff enjoys it. Um, the members enjoy it. The crowd enjoys it because they know everybody else is enjoying it. I mean, that's, that's really our ultimate goal. I love that. I, the way I kind of do it as a designer these days is I always think it's a show I want to see, you know, it's just a show I would want to sit in the stands and watch. I love that context of also with a show, of course, I'd want to be in and get to perform. I love that, that piece of it too. Shane, you guys are doing great work and good luck this season with all your groups, including at Mystique. I can't wait to see that show. Appreciate it. All right. So, boy, was that fun. That was, that was a conversation I had earlier today with Shane Gwaltney of Music City Mystique. So excited that the uh, season is underway and that they are talking about it. And I'm going to bring Dawson Levingwell on here, in here as well. So, Dawson, I want you and Lardis. What do you have to say about did anything that he said resonate with either one of you? Um, something that really resonated with me is just pushing the innovation in the activity. I feel that that's something that United Percussion specifically this year is gearing toward just bringing a new experience to the audience, to the judges, and to the performers. Yeah, um, I like what he said about teaching like the very basics, like I had a pole of floor. Like, first of all, again, you know, WGI is back. That's great to be cool and be awesome. Um, a lot of people that are younger are seeing this for the first time. They've seen videos before from like 2019 and 2020-ish 
but this is their first time maybe seeing it live in person. These kids are like, oh, I want to go do this. And now they kind of know what it entails now. So it's very important that, you know, they still they can see these things in person. So it's very cool that, I mean, it's cool that they get to see it in person. And it's important that they understand, like, every group is starting from the beginning. It's like, in some way or shape or form. Absolutely. So everybody, thanks for watching. If you're watching this live, please comment in the comments. Let us know where you're from and what you're, if you have any questions for anybody here, we're going to be showing some clips now of some different shows that, that we like and we're going to be talking about them. We're just excited that the WGI percussion season is happening. Of course, Laura Sakazinski is here as our uh, percussion guru on the panel. And Dawson, we reached out and said, hey, is anybody out there seeing some shows and, and have some shows you'd like them to talk about? It? And thank you for responding to that. So Dawson, tell everybody who you are. Hi, uh, so my name is Dawson Leffingwell. I am currently a band director down in Goliad, Texas. Um, I teach percussion in low brass, the middle school, and I teach high school drumline, obviously. Um, I got my degree from Oklahoma State University. Go folks. Um, I marched Compass Drum Corps this last summer, and I marched four years of Winter Guard with Resistance Indoor in Tulsa. So that's my biggest thing is I'm, I'm fresh out of college. I love, you know, I did indoor, so this is very close to my heart, and I just, I miss it, quite frankly. Awesome. Well, we've all missed it, and we're so excited that it's oh, back. Yeah. So we have our first clip is from George Mason University. Dawson, you said you really liked this group. You want to set up this clip? Tell us what you liked about this. Yeah. Before I do that, I do have some, like, general statements about WGI Fest School. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, um, again, it's back. Thank goodness it's going to be back. I've missed uh, symbol lines. I've missed watching people run around at 200 ppm. That's always fun to watch. Um, and I've noticed that masks are a huge deal. Not like an issue, but they're just very important because now that we're performing, we've lost half our face to a mask. So the visual program of your show is that much more important now because you've lost, again, half the face. So how do you convey these emotions, these concepts without half your face? It involves body movement. It involves like embodying the music, all these couple things. So with George Mason, I like them. I got my notes right here on the side. Uh, George Mason is great. Their show seems very ethereal. I couldn't find a show title in the 48 hours I had to get ready for this because uh, I'm teaching also. Um, but they have this front uniform. And it's like a off-white kind of gray looking thing. And the back is blue. And I love those double side uniforms because it's easy, it's easy staging, right? You have the snare drums playing the feature and they turn around and then the quads play a feature and they turn around and it's pit feature. So those easy moments of like, okay, now highlight this section and now highlight this section. It's super easy. I love that. Um, I mean, some of this will make sense when you watch the clip. So go ahead and pull that up um, yet yeah, now. If you... Yeah, yeah. No, let's, let's watch the clip and then we'll talk some about it afterwards. Like we'll Austin, nobody clip. begrudges you having a job and having a life and not being able to research drum lines all day, every day to get ready for this. I'm just I mean, I would. I would. I, I know. would. I know. Wouldn't that be awesome? But anyway, everybody, let's watch yeah. a clip from George Mason University. So, we, oh, of yeah. course, we're not seeing them on the floor. It's a lot, oh, so we yeah. didn't get to see the entire effect of it, but we did get to see the front ensemble turn around and see the back of the yeah. uniform. Very cool. Super cool. Um, their quads, first of all, just stupid good. Stupid good. <laughs> um, also, the mask thing. So, if you look at groups like, I think, Pulse Open World, they just have black masks, um, which is, you know, they, they have, which is great. But uh, George Mason, they had the, like, the front uniform on the mask. So, the mask is actually great because it helps – some groups, if they choose to use it, they can utilize, you know, the aesthetic of the uniform. And in that same sense, I think we'll get to that with Redline. So I'll, I'll save that for later, actually. So, I mean, sorry, brain's mush. Um, <laughs> if you saw uh, if you saw it, if you heard it, if it sounded well in the recording, the quads, like, hit the rim a lot, like, intentionally, like, on the drum four. Um, and indoor is great because it allows us, as percussionists, to use timbres that we couldn't normally hear in marching band and drum corps like the stick clicks, the rim, the drum shell, all these things. So there's a little bit more these kind of we can have in these small nuanced environments. So 
Yeah, very cool. Hey, everybody, if you're watching, we're just marching arts now. We're talking about WGI percussion. Laura, do you want to speak at all about the mass thing or about the anything else about that? Yeah, I um I was surprised when we went to our first Trumbull Regional. We got the note from the school that we were allowed to take the masks off right before we performed and put them on right after. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, I need to think about what I'm doing with my face because I have not been thinking about that this whole time. And <laughs> It was such, it felt so much more different because I marched drum corps this past summer. It's a much bigger environment. Indoor is such a, a smaller, more intimate environment. The crowd's right in front of you. Um, and it really gave me the opportunity connect, to connect with multiple different audience members in front of me, which was a very great experience. And going along with the different timbres that you hear in these ensembles, um, the, the intimate environment, especially in a front ensemble, we get to really play around with touch on the boards, making these very soft, warm, delicate sounds that you hear in marimba solo literature and everything. We are playing an arrangement of Adagio for Strings by Samuel Barber, um, which is just such a beautiful piece. And we're really able to add a lot of musicality to it um, just by being in that intimate environment. I agree. It's, it's a much more intimate environment. There's yeah. only so much you can do with half the time of a drum corps show in six minutes. And so everything you do, like the uniform, the costumes, I just said that twice in a row, <laughs> the floor, the props has to be like, everyone's on the same page the whole time. Cause it's a very, yeah. like people either get it or they don't. So it, it, it relies a lot on the performers. And I've seen that a lot more now this year, especially. Cause again, you lost half the face. How do you convey these things without using you're with gritting your teeth and you take your tongue out. Like how, how do you do those things without doing those things? Yeah. I love it. So you mentioned red line percussion in passing. That's our next clip. Everybody we're watching clips from WGI percussion. Dawson Livingwell is here with some of his favorite groups. Why red line? Why did you want to share them? I just, they're, they're, it's, it's cool. <laughs> from what I saw of, again, um, they don't have a, like a show, like they don't like they don't move around, but they, they do a full run of the show. Um, there's no floor, there's no like drill, but there's choreography. Um, but based on the, like the sound they have and like the uniforms and like the samples, I'm, I'm digging the show. Um, and my comment about uniforms I had for red line that I said earlier, um, uniforms now are becoming less uniform. They're fitting more of the aesthetic. So if you'll look at red line, you'll see, you'll see these people that have different things, each uniform. So base one might have a drop on the right leg. Snare drum four might have a left leg drop. The pit might not have a drop at all. They might have like a, a, a chain on their arm or whatever. So I think it's important. I think that's great because they're not just a uniform. They're not just another person. They're a member of the ensemble and they are themselves. And that allows them with the mask cutting off half their face again, um, it allows them to get further into the concept of I'm performing the show. What am I feeling right now? And it's it just helps make each person feel a little more you know individualistic about the show. All right, let's watch some of the red line percussion. Here we go. Come on, look at that. Get a load of that. But you, you see what I'm saying about the uniforms? Like one person had this yeah. one, that one different. Yeah, that's cool. Know, they end the show more that way because they're they're themselves. Um, I love the pit in the low part of the marimba. I love hearing that. It's super cool. Um, that's what got me on the like, oh, this should be a cool show. Like it's I haven't heard a lot of low marimba in a in a show recently in indoor, so it's very cool to see that. 
Um, there's not a whole lot I can talk about music wise because it's a it's a, a boomy gym, and that's you know unfortunate. But you know you've done indoor. If, ever, if you've done it, you've had a boomy gym run. So, I mean, t- take it what it is. So from what I can hear and pick out from the recordings of the drum line and from the sounds of what I can hear, they sound pretty good for February. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, it's early season, and oh, you know, yeah. we're just talking about WJF percussion. If you're if you're watching this, please like so we can get more people to watch and comment and let us know where you're watching from. Dawson, I think that's really interesting about the the uniform thing as well, and I just cannot wait to see that show on the on yeah. The floor, I'm like, looking forward to this thing when I impulse buy my ticket to finals and fly up there. <laughs> not doing that. Definitely not doing that. Okay, <laughs> Laura. Anything you want to say about Redline before we move on? Um, I think that they're off to a great start. It's just all these big groups that have these huge productions, you know, we just have to live it out in these small high school gyms for so long. And then we finally get our moment in Dayton where the actual full production makes a lot more sense just by having the space to perform it in. So mm-hmm. yeah, excited for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Okay. So the next one we're going to talk about, we're talking WGI percussion, everybody. We're, and we're going to talk about Vista Murrieta. Am I saying that right? I think so. So why did you choose this show, Dawson? I mean, I wanted to pick a high school that wasn't Chino Hills, just because I feel like, you know, they're the one that gets the recognition. Um, but it's very important to recognize that not only is WGI independent back, but so is Scholastic. And there's a lot of gaps, educationally, I've realized as teacher now, that, that we got to fill. Because um, a lot of my seventh graders in percussion were in, like, they, they were at home for percussion class. So a lot of the fundamentals, the basics, are just gone. And that doesn't really affect, you know, most of the kids – at these bigger schools, but there's still a gap there. You know, there's still things they don't know how to do because they were at home for a year and a half or whatever, you know? So that's the biggest thing there. And I just, they don't have to be super flashy and like all the back sticks and the full gawk shots and whatever. Like, it's just good to hear kids play together again and just to see them, you know, doing band again. It's, it's really cool. Absolutely. By the way, Dawson, your fan club is in here. We have one person that says, I played many, many years with Dawson Leffingwell yes. in Oklahoma. And I'm, Whoever that is, we're really sorry about that. And then, no, I'm just kidding. And then Paula is watching. It says, from Dawson's hometown of Kingfisher, Oklahoma. Hi, Mom. <laughs> ah, go tell your mom. You're awesome to be here watching. So let's watch a little bit of Vista Murrieta. So it's just great to see an, a, another great high school drum line that's really killing it already this year. Yeah. Uh, Laura, you want to say anything about that? Um, I just have such a huge level of respect for those kids. I mean, I was in indoor percussion all throughout high school, but it was not nearly at the level of world class scholastic. You know, the the amount of dedication that they put in both them and their educators is just absolutely wonderful and worthwhile. Um it's really inspired me as an educator to one day maybe develop a program like that of my own or hop into one, help out with it. But the level of dedication and talent is just very, very admirable. Yeah. That and the teachers too. Like it's very cool that they get to do that because not every kid gets to do that in yeah. high school. Like I didn't get to do that until like my senior year. And I was in the pit my senior year at my indoor group um, my first year. Yeah. It's just really cool to, you know, for those kids to get that opportunity. Cause I'm like, my kids now are telling me like, Oh, we want to do winter guard. I'm like, Hey, <laughs> one step at a time kiddos. Yeah. 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 It's such a unique experience too. Like, I try and explain yeah, this to anyone. I'm like, yeah, we play percussion instruments in a gym and we also are a character and we tell a story. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. so hard to drum explain. Corps, like drum corps is great because people just like stumble across it. Like they just show up to a field one day and there's a whole band there just playing stuff. But like mm-hmm. winter guard is much harder to conceptualize for people that, aren't, that don't do mm-hmm. bands. It's like, yeah, we run around in the gym we play drums and we like use our face to do emotions and stuff. And everyone's like, <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no man, it's really cool. And 
we go so hard to explain it and they're just like okay all right yeah <laughs> yeah and like no one just goes into a gym and says oh cool check out that drum yeah. over there that's cool no one does that very interesting. So everybody, thanks for watching Marching Arts Now. We are live here on this broadcast with Dawson Levingwell and Laura Sakazinski talking about WJ Percussion. And I'm just going to play the next clip, which is from Motor City. So let's watch them. Simple line, simple line. Yes, my favorite. <laughs> That's super cool. I Dawson, why'd that. you choose this clip? Well, first of all, I wanted to shout out the base five from the video that I saw. He had no malice the whole the whole run through, so he just used his hands. That that alone is the respect. So shout out uh, Motor City Base Five for doing that run without malice. Um, I just love the design. It seemed very cool. Like a, they they had a simple feature and then like the, the finger symbols. If you heard it in the back of there, they had like the flex of tones, cool. But in the back of that is why I chose the show because there's an old YouTube video from like 10 years ago or something like that. But this guy made like a PVC keyboard and he played a bunch of songs on it. Everyone's like, oh my God, he played the songs. And so <laughs> like, it's like very blue man group looking kind of thing. And they use those in the show. And like a part of the show is they have this guy come out and they play this, this tube and they make it longer and shorter. And they add a piece to it and it gets lower. And then it's like lower it's like longer and then shorter and then piece goes up and then it's higher and whatever and like that is just super cool like i love that that's so cool and i love that people are experimenting with these things that these instruments that we don't really use too often like they're already there like finger symbols a finger symbol feature come on now. Finger symbol line. A feature. <laughs> like half their show like they got it from like ace hardware pvc bam there's there's the big coolest part of the show and i love that you know you don't have to get these giant like video screens or like giant tower props to be good just like do something cool man i love that a lot so yeah i agree it's such a great environment to explore with instruments that aren't normally in the activity in 2020 united percussion had a mini cajon line they all bought all these mini cajons and the snare drums had them based off of ivan chavino's catching shadows and we kind of centered um, a feature around the the cajon instrument, which is a really cool experience. Wish we could have put that out for the rest of the season. Okay, and so now I'm not drummy, so and I am a music educator, and I do feel like I'm pretty smart, but I'm not sure what a cajon is. So why don't you fill me in? I can't be the only <laughs> one watching this. Not sure. Well, man, I probably, it's that wooden box that you sit on, and you can kind of do different drum beats on it. Um, it kind of like has little rattles in it. You can get a lot of different. Uh, sounds and textures just from one wooden box that you sit on. It's a pretty cool instrument. They're very popular in like churches. Like if you go to mm. any church in a bigger city that has like a, a praise band, they've got a cajon. Yeah. Some, some groups have like the full on drum set, which I did for several years. But some people, like some groups, like they just want the cajon. It's this box you sit on, you play it. It's everyone's got one. You think of it. It's honestly a great way for people that aren't percussionists to still get into it because it's like it's you yeah. sit on it and you hit the box. It's all it is. There's no like, okay. I mean, there is something to it, but you know, there's there's no need to that. And see, yeah. and now that everyone, that's the educational portion of today's show where we talked about that. And I am now going to go try to Google Cajon without Googling Cajones. But anyway, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. We're moving on. We're moving on. This was really fun. Dawson, what I love about this is like your enthusiasm and excitement about this activity is so palpable. So thank you for sharing that with us tonight. Oh, for sure. It's honestly half the reason that I chose what I did. I was going to be a computer scientist huh, or like a game designer before I did my first year of indoor. And when it, my first year of indoor, again, I said I was in the front ensemble. I played rack. I was not very good. Um, but we went out for prelims at the Nutter Center Arena in Kentucky. And like we did the run through and I was like, OK, I want to keep doing this. How do I do that? And it's honestly just been like I wouldn't be who I am today without things I did in indoor and drum corps. And so all these kids that, I, that saw me do the, through those things, thank you for getting me here. So I also wanted to say that on this live platform. So it's very cool. I've changed your life. It changed all of our lives, right? I mean, like being yes. in this activity changed all of our lives and we have missed it and we felt off. And so it's exciting that everybody's back on the floor. Everybody's finding really creative ways to make the season work. So Dawson, I'm going to send you 
back offline, but thank you so much for being here. You have one more thing you want to say? I'm sorry. I forgot about it. Shout out Pulse Percussion for playing Latin Lover again. Yes, <laughs> I missed that. I, I had to get out of the way. I just, okay. I was so stoked when that came out, that they're playing Latin Lover. If you don't know what it is, it's an old mid-2000s, like, drum core lock cadence thing. I, It's just cool to see. So go watch the videos, Pulse Percussion, Latin Lover. Very cool. All right. Early 2000s. That's like really old school. That's the guy that marched in 1980. But anyway, yeah. I didn't say that either. <laughs> so thank you, Dawson, everybody, for great. watching. Dawson, thank you, man. You were great. Thank you. So, Laura, man, the season is happening. We watched some clips. How do you feel after seeing these clips of Drumline happening? I feel really excited. Um, you know, United Percussion is based out of New Jersey. We're kind of isolated in the top corner of the country. So, you know, we get to Dayton and we see all these groups that we haven't been able to see all season. And I just can't wait for that moment. I can't wait to get out to more regionals, see other high school and independent groups and just enjoy the culture of being in person again. Absolutely. So thank you, Laura Sakazinski, for being here as part of this, our team tonight. Listen, everybody, Marching Arts Now is a live performance, a live performance, a live event happening every Tuesday. You can find all of the episodes from this fall and this winter at the Marching Roundtable YouTube channel. They're also on our website at marchingartseducation.com. We will be here every week. Next week is Color Guard. The week after that, we'll be back to talk more percussion. We'll be alternating weeks all the way through the rest of the season. Laura, thank you for being here. By the way, if you're watching everybody and you weren't here at the beginning, the recording is going to be up. Go back to the beginning because you can see Laura. There's a clip of her performing with the United Percussion. You want to make sure you catch that. And of course, I had an interview earlier with Shane Gwaltney of Music City Mystique. He talked about that show. So Go back and watch the whole thing. If you thought this was fun and you thought it was helpful or entertaining or anything, tell a friend about it. Let them watch too. We're trying to get the word out. And especially if you're attending a regional, you're going to be seeing some shows and you want to come on like Dawson and be a rock star and sort of talk about shows with us, please let us know. You can reach us on all the, all the socials. And also, if you are a group and you have a great story or you want to have something you want to tell us about your season, we want to hear from you, too. You can reach out to me at the Marching Roundtable. You can reach out to Jeremy Williams at Guard Closet. You can go to the Instagram for all of these different things. Laura, anything you want to say before we hang up for the night? Um, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> I'm just super excited for the season, super excited to be back in person. And um, I'm really excited to see all these other groups and what they're putting out. Um while furthering myself and, and my education and everything. So it's been, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And listen, everybody, we have a lot of great guests lined up. Um, thanks again to Shane Gwaltney from Music City Mystique. Thanks to Dawson Leffingwell for being here as our, our special commentator and bringing some great shows. Laura, I look forward to seeing you the next time we talk about percussion. Absolutely. And thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. Marching Arts Now, you had a great time. Everybody have a wonderful evening. Marching Arts Education and Guard Closet present Marching Arts Now!